The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, this is Larry Pesavento setting in for Steve Rhodes. I'll be doing that the rest of this week, and uh, we'll take a look at some of these markets. The first uh, chart that I've posted in uh, to Tiger TV here today is the chart uh, of the uh, – wow, I don't even see it in there. It's a chart of the um, – I hope it came in there or not. I thought the advanced decline line popped up. I don't see where it's uploaded. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Uh, maybe I'll have to do it again. Let me better, better let me do it again. Ah, good. Um, yeah, that's the NYSC. No, no, I don't want the NYSC. I want the, uh, yes, that's the one I want. There we go. Yeah, that's the advanced decline line. Um, I'll tell you how I do this. Each weekend, I start Friday afternoon, late uh, after the markets close. I start looking at the charts uh, through the years. I don't, uh, through the day. <laughs> and I don't uh, print out any charts or get any charts ready. I wait to do that Saturday morning. Uh, I'm here in Philadelphia visiting my grandkids, and my four-year-old uh, grandson gets up real early like I do. So at 5 o'clock, I start working, and he sits on my lap, and we go through the charts, and he's asking me what I'm doing and stuff. And uh, this weekend, I was doing this, and I was looking at these charts, and I would look at the chart, and I'd say, are you joking me? And he got a really – he thought that was very, very funny, and he asked me why I said that. And I said, well, what this chart is saying is not what people are looking at. And so I tried to tell him, I said that because people tell them certain things, that doesn't mean they're always true. And so he didn't quite understand that. But boy, folks, I looked at these charts, and man alive, let me tell you, there's some bearish charts out here. I mean, I look at these charts over the weekend. I went through every single one of the indices that I looked at, uh, and other other than the biotech and the uh, uh, the banking index, boy, they really look sick. Uh, I'll show you a couple others here uh, pretty soon to look at. Uh, but you can see this first one is the advanced decline line. Um, I think that is the uh, – I hope it's in there. Let's put it up here. This first one I think I have is the uh, – oh, that's the NYSE index. This is what happened Friday. Uh, the market gapped down after making a new high on Thursday. Uh, it gapped down and closed lower. I mean, that that is itself a very bad uh, – a bad chart that's a key reversal date uh, for one thing but the chart that to me that looks the absolute worst of all the charts that I looked at that really helps to describe what's uh, what's happening in the market I believe is the advanced decline line and if we take a look at this advanced decline line you're gonna see that it has been going down ever since April 27th we've had a sequence of four lower highs and now it's started to roll over, you know, quite badly. This is breadth falling apart, folks. I don't know what else I, I can say. Maybe I'm looking at something totally wrong here when I'm watching these charts because these things look, uh, look so bearish to me that it's absolutely scary. Uh, I was up all night trading currencies because I have a position on in the euro, and I'm, we, we try adding to it every time it rallies a little bit. And uh, the, the euro has been under a great deal of pressure so far. It's hit the exact 61% retracement of the last low we made back in that 104.50 level. Uh, it's held it so far. The Australian dollar has broken below that level. It held it for a little bit. So we're at a real critical level here in the euro. And the PIP spreads uh, in the euro are, are widening out, folks. Usually PIP spreads in the euro are usually one or two PIPs at most. And now sometimes it's five and six ticks. I mean, that's uh, when it gets to 12 ticks, when it gets to 12 ticks on the spread, they got a word for that. It's called P A N A C P A N I C, panic, because when that move money starts moving uh, that way with uh, wide spreads, that's when you start to see you know real uh, uh, pain coming into the market, and then some real scariness. Uh, the other chart that uh, I wanted to bring up that looked uh, just so incredibly bullish to me uh, is the uh, if I can find it here, and there it is. 
is the VIX index chart. I wanted to uh, let you folks take a look at this because this is making the same pattern that we made uh, way back uh, uh, in February. You notice we made a big ABCD uh, butterfly pattern. What do we have now? An ABCD butterfly pattern that came in uh, on Friday. So uh, that's going to be interesting. The other thing that was interesting about this week is that we had a holiday uh, over the weekend and the Friday before the holiday has a 70% chance of being bullish and ghost golly gee it was not bullish this week or this time frame so that also puts a negative uh, turn on the market and uh, talking about scary charts I wanted to show you a few of them because some of them just really absolutely uh, are incredibly scary and I will bring it up here just as soon as I can find it. Boy, oh boy, I know I have it right. Ah, I put it right up at the beginning here. And that is the, uh, the difference between what's happening in the Dow Jones and what's happening in the transportations. Uh, you can see this uh, tremendous uh, dif differential that we have here now, much like we had in 2007. So um, we'll uh, watch this very, very closely. Folks, this thing is going to be so much worse than 2007. It, abs it absolutely scares me. And the reason why is, uh, and maybe I'm totally wrong, and I'm wrong a lot for sure, is that the complacency that's out there is just beyond belief. You can see it in the junk bond market. You can see it in the VIX index. Uh, you can, well, you can see it in, in the advanced decline line. No one really cares. I mean, before, if you got something like this, people would be yelling and screaming, you know, uh, this, this market's under some, you know, some real uh, bad pressure. You know, we're pretty much at the same price as we were in July of last year with stocks. If you take out the 30 Dow stocks and then the, the 30 or so stocks and the uh, NASDAQ that are also in the S&P and the Dow, and you're talking 531 stocks have done pretty good. The rest of them are not doing that well. This is another sign that's not very good. You've got the interest rates are certainly looking like they want to go higher. I don't think there's any question about that. You can see the bond market's under a great deal of, uh, great deal of stress, so we've got to factor these things in. Now, we have a phone number here if you'd like to call in 877-927-6648. So this is my first show uh, during the, this time of the morning, which is usually my busy time of the morning. And so I'm trying it out here to see how it's going to work, and uh, we'll see how things are going. Now, bro gold has broken down below the really strong support it had at 1192. Uh, silver is getting really close to breaking down below its support. So if these break, and we've already seen a rollover in crude oil, which we've been bearish on for quite some time. So that's going to tell us that that gold and silver, they're in big trouble. And uh, these are the next ones that might have a you know huge move to the downside. I don't see how anyone can be bullish gold anymore because we did not we did not hold 1193. We should have held that like a rock, and we did this morning for about two hours, and then the rock slipped off the the moss and into the water because uh, she's you know broken pretty badly below that. So my assumption is that you know we're going lower here uh, in gold and silver. That does not mean that you should not buy some silver rounds uh, and the silver um, e eagles that I've talked about, the one-ounce coins. I believe any time you can buy those uh, under, under you know, $17, $18, I believe you should buy those and just put some away just for the rainy day that might come sometime if all this stuff with uh, quantitative easing and all the other things that are happening uh, you know, actually come due, and then you've really got a big problem. There was a really interesting market today that I was, the reason why I was up is I trade the DAX. That's the German stock market. Believe me, folks, it's the S&P on steroids. We had a, we had a move in uh, the German DAX today, equivalent, follow me now, we had equivalent move of 30 points down in the S&P. That was the equivalence of 30 points down. That's much more than we've done today. And then we had a rally of 60 points to the upside, equivalent points. That's how, that's how wild that market is. Now, it's got a $20,000 margin, but it's still, and that's in euros, and, uh, you know, it's still incredibly uh, easy to trade, and it's, you know, should be, uh, you know, should be looking at uh, something uh, quite a bit lower uh, as near as uh, what I can look at here. Um, the, uh, the, the move that we had in the New York Stock Exchange Index with that gap down Friday and that bad close was telling us that something really bad is coming. If you remember last week when I was on the show, we had Norm Winsky on from uh, Astro Trends, and we were looking at the Mercury 
uh, uh, retrograde and also with the new moon and that it seemed to be working right now that tells us we're going to drop at least if it does like the last mercury retrograde new moon did that means we're going to drop at least 900 points from the high so that's going to take 17,400 uh, but I, I will say this this is from my just from my gut feeling and in all these years looking at markets and believe me I don't think there's anybody um, out there that looks at as many markets uh, well they look at more but they don't look at them as much as I do and uh, I do I do spend a great deal of time because this is what I enjoy doing and I have not been this scared in a while I'm, I'm scared on the right side I think but uh, this is something that's really going to hurt because nobody sees this coming I mean absolutely no nobody I mean it's just literally uh, it's it's really really scary uh, I, I have to tell you this. Well, I'm going to show you two charts that should really just, uh, you know, really scare you if uh, these others don't. And th this, the first one that we're going to look at here is the uh, margin debt uh, versus the S&P. I know it's different this time, but just look at these arrows that are here that I marked in here, these down arrows in 2000. And then you see 2007. And look where we are now. You see the spread between uh, 2000 and uh, from uh, 2100 in the S&P and where we are in margin debt right now with margin debt making a three drive to a bottom pattern hello hello yes yeah you want to pay attention to this one boys and girls and this is what's going to cause this thing to really really shake the tree because there's just not much protection being taken for this and I, I guess I'm getting a little too wound up there probably this will probably be my last show for the week <laughs> That might be a good thing. Anyway, this is really bearish. I, I just don't see how you can. Uh, I, I think you'll if we get the S and P below. Um, uh, see, it's trading at 21 and 21. If we get if we get it below 2080 uh, this week, uh, you're going to start to see it accelerate. I think uh, uh, quite a bit. We haven't we haven't even backed off hardly at all. So, and there's no reason for anybody to be afraid. I'm just you know trying to scare the bejeebies out of you before you get into too much trouble now the net and it, and then i might be the one that's uh in trouble too you just never know i'm just giving it like i see it boys and girls that's all i can do no more no less okay i'll calm down yes okay all right this is the one with New York Stock Exchange with investor credit in the markets. You see the same type of a situation here where we've got massive credit out there. And uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is not good. You can see the tech bubble. You can see the uh, home, what it was, the home loan bubble, whatever it happened to be. So that's the thing that we have looking at right now. This is, these are not good things, folks. And uh, we've got the VIX index down at a level where there's hardly anybody is uh, looking at uh, you know reversal of any kind. So it's going to be really interesting here what's going to happen because it's certainly uh, it's going to be good. Okay, we can take a little break here before the market opens. We'll be right back after these few words. follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy. A set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. 
Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, uh, we're back. Uh, Larry Pesavano setting in for Steve Rhodes. Uh, I've also posted into the uh, Tiger TV here the chart of the German DAX of what it did today. As you notice uh, on the chart, the blue line is the S&P 500. You can see it's still way up in the air compared to what's happened to the DAX. It's been in a, a bear market now for about four or five months. We just completed a Gartley this morning at exactly the 61 uh, percent retracement, folks. It hit it within one point at uh, 11,934. I believe the high was 36. That's two points. Uh, that move that you're seeing there from the high to the low with the big wide candle, um, that is equivalent to um, 200, let's try that again, 2,000 S&P points. Uh, that would be $10,000, and that's how much you had a move today. Uh, in the, that's, that's not right. It's $5,000 move in the DAX, so that would be equivalent to 1,000 S&P points today. Uh, the, the margin is 20 grand on this, so it's four times the normal uh, margin that you have in the S&P, but the volatility is uh, really, really big. I mean, it, it really swings a big stick. It opened down about 90 points. Uh, went down to about 160, 
turned around and rallied 190 and then has come back and now making new lows on the day. Uh, that's what you call a very, very wild swinging day. We are going to see moves coming, folks, that I believe are going to uh, shake the tree a little bit, as they, as they say in the trade, shake you up a little bit. But be prepared for them. You know, find your best spots for entry as the best you can. And, uh, you know, take a look at it from that point of view. The way I do things, uh, you know, I'm a pattern recognition swing trader. I use the patterns that are based on these angles, which are nothing more than the angles of numbers. And uh, I try to find two or three angles coming together. I match them with the, you know, the Fibonacci numbers and numbers of sacred geometry that I use. And uh, that's basically, you know, it's quite simple. And uh, then when the two numbers come together, uh, I try to, uh, you know, enter the trade. I look at the trend uh, and going back over the last six or seven weeks. And the best trades are the ones that, of course, are in the direction of the trend. If you got lower tops, you're in a downtrend. If you got higher bottoms, you're in an uptrend. But there are times when you have these patterns line up that are just so perfect that you have to really respect them and take the other side of the trade. That's when you're making a three drive to a top pattern and then also three drive to a bottom pattern. Those are the ones that you can take because they have a tremendous amount of profit potential when they're correct. And you're only using a probability of around, you know, 65, 70 percent at best. So you got to get slapped around a little bit. So the thing is, is to get slapped with the kid gloves. And when you throw your punches, you know, throw them with the, the glove that has the, the lead weight in it. That's what you that's what you're trying to do. So. Uh, that's what pattern recognition really tries to do is to put the odds in your favor and uh, be able to let you pop, pack a good punch, you know, when the time uh, when the time is right. And that's what we're looking at. Remember when that gold was up around 1232, uh, three weeks, well, it was 10 days ago, we were warning that that was very reminiscent of a false breakout. Uh, for several reasons. One is silver had been the strongest, had turned the weakest. And the second reason is, is they closed above the highs of the previous month. Uh, excuse me, they went above the highs of previous month and then closed below those numbers. So usually when you do that and it's really strong, the market will explode through there and close very strong. Neither gold nor silver uh, would do that. We did have some positive increases in open interest uh, over the past five or six trading days. But uh, as you can see by today's action, uh, they've given all that back. I don't know what the open interest is going to do. I'll have to check tonight. But that's what it's telling us right now, that there uh, there's appears to be a problem uh, in the gold market. And, folks, this gold market could go down and all very, very far, far down. Remember, crude oil went from uh, 104 you know, all the way down to 40. We could get gold you know, from 1230 all the way down to 700. I know I'm looking at 860 as my potential target, but, you know, it might go to 700, it might go to 600. You don't know. Back in 19, uh, you know, uh, 80, when it made its high at 865, gold was in a bear market for 20-some 20, uh, 20 years. It finally bottomed in 2002 at $260 an ounce. So it gave back 75% of its value. So when these things crack, they can really hurt uh, badly, so that's the that's the whole key. Uh, the the sixty four dollar question that I have coming up already is why are you buying silver rounds and silver eagles? I'm buying silver rounds and silver eagles as safety deposit coins and numismatic coins. Put them away and take a look at them. That's it. Going to take a break here, pay a few bills. We'll come right back. With these few words. Larry Pesavento for Steve Rhodes. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization.
monetization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, it looks like they're off to the races. Uh, we'll see what happens here. We had a little sell-off last night. Uh, basically, it started when the DAX index gave up. And then uh, after that, it rallied back. And now we're, this is only the, uh, this is not even a day down yet. We haven't had a down day. We had a minor down day on Friday. So we haven't had a sequence of four or five or six days in a row uh, in a very long time. And I could be wrong all about this bearishness. Uh, you know, I'm wrong a lot, but boy, when I look at all this stuff, folks, it's scary as heck. And that's really negative stuff when I look at these charts. And remember, I'm, I'm not a technician. I don't, uh, well, let's, 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 let's Freudian slip, I guess. I'm not a fundamentalist. And all I do is I look at the uh, 
the market from a point of view that you know we're basically looking at something that will will try to tell us with charts that you know this is where we're going to be moving uh, either one direction or the other that's all you really can do you know when you're when you're doing these things so please keep that in mind when you do this i i do my best to try to find some of these things but but frankly sometimes they absolutely scare you to death and you just literally want to uh you know to find them to get a place where you're able to uh you know, uh, buy something and sell something uh, with a pattern, and you don't have to risk very much. That's basically it. Where we had some little early morning selling, looks like it's coming in here with the stock market now. The first couple minutes was strong, and now it's starting to weaken up. But uh, these charts look really bad, folks. Uh, I don't know where the market's going to go, but if we go below that 2080, 20, 2090, 2080 level in the S&P futures, that's going to signal a very, very uh, rough time for things. I think that would be what I would assume would be what what I would assume would be happening so that's basically it I don't know how uh, Steve handled his show I'm gonna try to do it the best way uh, that I can because I don't watch uh, uh, the monitors uh, all day long I try to put the trades on that I like to see and then move on to something else but if you have questions of something you'd like to look at with the stock you know I'll certainly try to answer it for you the number to call in is 877 uh, nine two seven six six four eight. If you do have any questions, the um, the transportations being as weak as they are uh, versus the uh, Dow Jones. I mean, you have to go back into history. And I, two thousand and seven, it was it was pretty bad. But this is even worse. Uh, and if you go back farther than that, you can't find one where there it's this bad. So this is really historical stuff. And when you see the spread between credit and debt. And where the S&P is, boy, that should just scare the heck out of you. And then when you look at that advanced decline line, also telling you that there's problems somewhere, you really want to be a little afraid of what's going on because it's a, uh, a real, real negative thing. And we've got massive speculation going on in China with the uh, Shanghai index. Believe it or not, folks, they do more uh, futures trading in Shanghai than they do at the Merck in New York. I mean, that this is hard to believe. I was just there three years ago in 2012 uh, when they just opened the exchange. I was one of the guests that helped open the thing, and I gave a, a four-hour talk on the markets and stuff and Fibonacci and the usual things uh, that I do. And, I mean, that place was empty. I mean, there was nobody there. And now it's, uh, it's going bonkers, which I'm glad to see the success. It's a fabulous building. It's 98 stories high. And the real state of the art, uh, everything involved with it. But boy, uh, uh, let me tell you, this market that they have over there is really, really quite frothy. And they have really strict rules on short selling. So the bias is always to the long side. So when the, the profit taking does come, uh, it's uh, you call your broker and say, I'd like to sell. And the broker says, to who? And that's always a problem because uh, you got to remember this is why things go. Uh, one of the, my favorite books that I've mentioned many times before is the book called, um, oh dear, <laughs> My Own Story by Bernard Baruch. And Bar Baruch was a close confidant to uh, Franklin Roosevelt and also to uh, J.P. Morgan. And of course, his favorite saying was, you know, don't be concerned on the return on your money, be concerned on the return of your money. And the thing that he really, really focused on was that the stock market existed for one purpose and one purpose only. That was to inflate prices to a high price to get people to buy it all the way down. And that's what he really believed happened in the market. So whether that's the case or not, I don't know. But that's what Bernard Baruch, who was a pretty sharp dude, um, thought about the markets. And maybe that's it. We know we've got some these stocks now that I've never even heard of. I, I didn't even know what Uber was until this past uh, past weekend. I thought it was something that came out of your nose, but that was spelled wrong. Wasn't it? Well, anyway, they, that's going to be valued at a couple billion dollars or something like that. And I can't imagine why anybody would ride in a car with a, you know, a person that could be totally unknown, whereas with the yellow cab, at least, you know, the guy came from Pakistan or someplace like that. You know, this is the that's the main thing. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm just, uh, I never got into the 21st century very much. I missed it. I missed most of the 20th century. I did get part of the 19th century, but, you know, we'll have to let history tell us where we're going to be. Folks, I've never been this bearish before. Uh, uh, well, I have, but not 
not not at this level where uh, you know we're way up here near a high and uh, we haven't even began to see what's going to happen I think the volatility that we're going to see is yeah, probably going to scare me and uh, hopefully I'll be ready for it but uh, this is just the beginning we will see some moves that are going to going to shock some people because this debt thing that's out there that debt and credit bubble believe me when they ask for their money they want it right away and that's not how they usually get it so uh, keep that in mind uh, you know when you're looking at these things I wanted to uh, show you the gold chart today because it was at a really key point this morning and uh, it gave up the ghost uh, right when it uh, got there it held there for actually about two hours uh, it held right at the uh, 1192 and a half level rallied up to 1195 I bought it at 1190 um, 92 90 is where I bought it and it rallied a couple of bucks. I raised my stop to 1191.90. I took a dollar hit on that and I didn't go short because I had too much other stuff that was on the short side and I didn't want to be lopsided more than I already am because I'm I'm very negative the euro and the the pound and the uh, uh, the stock market and even the bond market and the bond market is still up on the day. So uh, you know, I think the real problem when this whole thing comes together with this quantitative easing, and I believe they will have another name for it. It won't be called quantitative easing. I don't know. I'm not very good with the, the, the joke stuff that uh, uh, some of these guys like uh, Letterman, well, not Letterman, but Johnny Carson and some of these uh, fantastic writers can, you know, pull out out of their hat some things to to, re, to recall it but uh, I think they're going to look at it and say oh my god it's going to be like long-term capital say so how did we get into this mess we have another problem in the market folks and that is the lack of volume the lack of liquidity that's another really bad thing because if you got a lot of liquidity it can absorb a lot of stuff but if you don't have a lot of liquidity it's not going to absorb a lot of stuff you're going to see pockets of air and air pockets are not good because people get hammered really bad and then they start screaming to their congressman and their broker and everybody else because nobody protected them. They said, well, how come you're not, you're, you protected the banks? They were too big to fail. Why can't you uh, take care of Alice and Frank? Because we're too uh, small to fail. Is that the problem? Well, of course it is. Anyway, that's another problem we have in there is we got lack of liquidity. That's my guess. So uh, I, I can't say anything more than that. You know, that's all there is to say. Okay, I have a couple other charts here that I think uh, are still um, important. We've got one here is the uh, the banking index uh, still looks still pretty good. Uh, you know, it uh, uh, backed off just a little bit to that Twentyman line that we talked about. That was the line that my good friend Jim Twentyman had pointed out, where the market breaks a trend line, pulls back to it one more time, and then takes off. And that's what it's done. It's gone up to made new highs. Uh, this has completed uh, three peaks in a domed house, which is one of the, uh, you can see the three tops there in the chart. And then we had the other one on last Tuesday was the final top. Uh, that was one of uh, Lindsay's favorite. In fact, the one that made him so famous was the three peaks in a domed house. He did a lot of uh, um, uh, time counts. He was a true genius, the, the, uh, George Lindsay was. But all I do is I just look at it from a symmetrical point of view that the tops are relatively equal between one, two, and three, and then also the final one into four. So uh, that's another pattern that, you know, had been bullish. And, uh, you know, now it's a potential for something actually uh, pretty bearish. So I hope all this stuff makes sense to you. I don't get any calls in today, so either everybody is still sound asleep or they don't know it's my show, which could be a little bit of each. Um, the most important part of the day I, for me is the, you know, the first hour of trading. And so for me to do the show during this time frame, is, uh, it's a little bit of a mental challenge because I don't watch the markets while I'm doing the show. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time, fortunately. So that's the, the main thing that I'm watching. I do pop up and look at the uh, TFNN screen to see what's happening with the markets occasionally. But frankly, you know, not very, uh, not very much. But uh, most of my trading is done by noon Eastern time, which is uh, pretty good, at least at least for me. But then I watch it off and on every half hour. I'll pop in just to see what's happened. We're going to have a really bad day here. I don't know what day it's going to be. I really thought it had a chance to be Friday because of the market being up and then down. And the pip spreads were going absolutely nuts when the euro started to collapse. Uh, it was really a wide, uh, the pip spreads got all the way out to 12 pips, 
uh, in the euro versus U.S. dollar. Usually it's one or two pips, and this is a big market, folks. This is thousands of times bigger than the stock market. And remember, the bond market, the corporate bond market and the junk bond market are many, many times bigger than the stock market, and that's, that's where the problem arises, and we haven't even begun to see that yet. Rates have already started to increase. We can see that by the price of bonds and notes, but uh, the Federal Reserve hasn't done anything yet. I, whether they're afraid to do it or they're holding off, I don't know. They, they call me each day asking me my, for my opinion, but when I give it, nobody does anything. What can I do? Anyway, we're going to have a, a special guest on, hopefully on um, Wednesday. I'd like, I'm, I'm hopefully have it set up. I don't want to mention it yet because I haven't got approval yet, but I'm hoping that uh, we do have a, uh, a new guest coming in uh, on Wednesday's show, which will, will be tomorrow, Wednesday or Thursday. And since I'm doing them every day, I'll try to have a couple different guests in every week. I know I'll have Arch Crawford back. We'll have Bill Meridian back. I'm hoping to have Larry Williams and uh, possibly Bob Rector and a few other people that uh, might want to come in and, you know, take a look at some of these things. So, uh, we are in instances, we're in these markets where we really have some uh, really important things uh, to look at. So that's the main thing. Now, I've got a uh, really interesting chart to show you here. We're talking about the British pound here because this is a chart from my good friend Andy Fink. He's one of my students from uh, Germany, uh, right outside of Berlin. He's an excellent trader, and uh, he's been short the euro, excuse me, the pound for uh, about uh, a week and a half now. And he's looking for this ABCD pattern to come in at around the 153.50 uh, level, 153.60, 153.50 level. Now, remember, the euro has made the long term. Let's put that up here and show you folks what that looks like because it's a very important spot where we are in the euro. How much effect that's going to have on the stock market, I'm not actually sure. And it might not last very long. It's, it's held for several hours so far today, but it went right down to the uh, nearly to the exact uh, price and held so let me put this up and I'll bring it up here and you'll see it because we were right I think our low today was uh, 108.73 as I recall and we were looking right near that area where the ABCD completed uh, at that point because we've come down this is only the the sixth day down from the high you can see how much we've dropped we've dropped two and a half percent and that's a lot in the dollar uh, or, or the euro that's that's a very very large amount because that that that's really big. That's real money, folks. That's not funny money. That's uh, real money moving around. So both of those currencies are, you know, getting to a spot where it looks real interesting that they might be uh, getting ready to do something. But we haven't had a really, really bad day yet uh, in stocks. You know, it's been, you know, we're Dow's down, what, 100? That's really, really not very much at all. So, okay, we've got to take a break. Got the Dow down 111, uh, S&P down 12, and gold down 16.
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted a chart. Of, I'm going to change course here a little bit because uh, this is uh, I have to keep my eyes on the ball here. And uh, this is probably one of the best patterns uh, that you're going to see if you believe in pattern recognition. This is the chart of November soybeans. Um, and basically what it's doing is it's showing the price and time. You'll notice the triangles there are showing from the time of the high to the time of the low at mid-cycle is exactly to what's happening today 
Uh, we're looking to buy the November beans at 903 and a half. Uh, so far, the low has been 905 and a quarter. Uh, they're trading a few cents higher than that now, but we're continue to hold to uh, see if we can buy the beans at that point. But this chart is uh, as perfect a symmetrical chart as you will ever find doing technical analysis with pattern recognition. I frankly believe it will be impossible to find one that um, does everything that this chart does because it has so many patterns in it that you just can't find anymore. You have two major uh, ABCD patterns at the 1.27 and 1.618 uh, expansion. You have two butterfly patterns. Uh, you have two three drive to a bottom patterns. Folks, you've got seven patterns in there all coming together in price and time for today. So, uh, you know, the, the, this is where you want to be looking to take a, uh, a nibble on the long side of soybeans. Either buy yourself a call, possibly, or, uh, you know, just get in the, involved in the soybean market uh, some way. I know that the, the, the news is horrible, but, boy, this chart has got everything that you could ask for. If this thing was turned upside down, you'd sell it till there was no tomorrow. So that's the main thing that you want to be uh, – I don't know how you can find anything any better. So uh, watch that very closely. We'll be doing a little bit of bean stuff each day because that's one of the things that I really enjoy trading. And I, I know that some of you folks do have commodity accounts, and you'll be able to watch it to see how it unfolds. Uh, this reminds me very much of what happened uh, to the market in 1983. I wanted to show you this market here, and we'll take a look at it here if we can. And I think coming to the end of the road already. So I think that might be the end of the show. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Is that it? If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.